Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the large Batagaika Thermokarst crater that began forming in the 1960s, 410 miles to the north of Yaktuxt. The first of many events that initiated the crater's formation was the rapid deforestation in the region. The treetops stopped shading the earth during the warm summer months, and the sun started gradually heating the ground up. This was intensified by the lack of humidity, which would cool the air and ground by evaporating on the leaves of the now non-existent trees. Global warming played a large role in this process, too. Now, in recent years, the noted gradual increase in temperature is melting ice in the Batagaika crater, causing it to continue growing. It's over one kilometer long, or about a half a mile, and about 330 feet deep, and is actively growing. Fred Gunther from the Alfred Wengener Institute in Potsdam, Germany, and his colleagues have been observing this location for 10 years using satellite images to determine its growth rate. Now, during their research period, the crater has been growing about 10 meters or 33 feet a year. Warmer years showed even quicker growth, up to 30 meters or 100 feet per year. The crater will probably grow until it reaches its limits or reaches stony soil, or the crater will run out of ice. Everything has its limits. In the end, the crater will turn into a ravine whose bottom may contain a lake, but that's still decades away. Now, this is important because the Batagaika crater shows the active melting of the permafrost that is split into two types. Now, the first formed frost from subterraneous ice that remains from the last ice age, and the second from ice formed in the soil. The second type is found in the crater. So active melting of these layers on a planet-wide scale could lead to the release of a huge amount of greenhouse gases. Then these gases would enter the atmosphere and hasten global warming. It's a natural occurrence since over the last 200,000 years, the Earth's climate has changed several times. Comparatively warm glacial periods were replaced with cold glacial periods, and human influence is just accelerating the process. Now, it is very possible that the formation of such craters in the future will become a natural occurrence in long-lasting permafrost regions. Now, the crater is incredibly interesting for scientists. Its rocks easily show the geological layers from various eras whose structure and makeup might tell us much about our planet's past and its climate periods and inhabitants. The oldest of these layers was formed some 200,000 years ago. The crater soil has already revealed many fossils to researchers. Paleologists have found frozen remains from bison, musk oxen, and mammoths. Studying the crater is very important, since not much is known about a huge part of northern Siberia's climate history. By understanding how the environment changed in the past, scientists can predict similar changes in the future. It's worth noting that similar craters are found in Canada and Greenland, but the Siberian crater is two to three times deeper. Scientists have already called the Batagaika crater one of the most important objects of study for permafrost. And the gates to hell, as the locals call the crater, are actually the best gates to the past. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.